In this video, we're going to start looking at radian measures. Radians are an alternative way of measuring angles. When we've measured angles in the past, we've always used degrees. We're now going to use something called radians. They're simply a different unit. It's important that you understand radians as when it comes to calculus, so differentiation and integration, and we have trig functions, we will always evaluate using radians instead of degrees. Let's start off by looking at what a radian is. I'm going to draw now three circles and we're going to look at the size of an angle subtended at the centre of each of these circles. So let's go ahead, that's the centre. This is going to be a radius, this is going to be a radius. The angle just here I'm going to call theta. So that is theta, radius r, radius r. And we're going to look at this arc length. So the arc length just here, I'm going to call L. If we want to find the size of the angle theta in radians, we simply say now that it's the arc length L divided by the radius R. And that will give us the size of the angle in radians. If we move on to the next circle, I'm going to look at what one radian is. So one radian, let's put this on, put that just there. Again, we've got a circle with an, an angle subtended at the centre of theta, a radius of r, and this time I'm going to have an arc length r. So when the arc length is r and the radius is r, this angle right here is going to be one radian. If we look at this, theta is equal to r divided by r, so theta will be equal to one. We say this is one radian and the notation we use is a little c. So if you see, for example, 2.78 and a little c, that is now measured in radians. Sometimes it's left off. If it is left off, you assume it's radians rather than degrees. So an angle subtended at the centre, theta with radius r, arc length r, gives us now one radian. What I'm now going to do is look at the relationship between radians and degrees. This is a circle. Again, that's going to be the centre. This time I'm going to consider the angle just here, which is going to be one complete revolution, which is 360 degrees. This is going to be theta. This is going to be r. Now, the arc length in this particular case is going to be the circumference of a circle. We know the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. So we can say that theta will be equal to the arc length, again, one complete revolution, which is 2 pi r, divided by the radius r, which gives us now that theta is equal to 2 pi radians. So if we look, one complete revolution is 2 pi. If we build this up to the side, we can say now that 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians. Often you'll just see 2 pi. From this, we can see that 180 degrees is going to be equal to pi radians. So what we're getting here now is some understanding of what pi looks like in terms of degrees. So 360 is 2 pi radians, and then 180 is pi radians. If we consider pi is approximately 3.14, what I'm now going to look at is 1 radian. 1 radian is 180 divided by pi, and this is going to give us approximately 57.3. So let's look at this. So... Uh, 180 and then we're going to now divide this let's divide this by pi so one radian is 57 so let's write this down which is approximately that 57.3 uh, and that's going to be three degrees so that is one radian so when we consider now a complete revolution we can see and if I just draw another circle up we can see that we can squeeze approximately, give or take, and I'll just put these in, that's going to be one radian, that's going to be one radian, we've got another radian just here, 
and then we've got another one just here we've got another one just here and then we've got another one let's just put that in another sliver just here so when we look at 360 degrees 2 pi is going to give us approximately now 6.28 radians and that of course is going to be double pi so that's a brief introduction one radian now is simply given to be the angle subtended when the arc length is r and the radius is r we can see the conversions just here and that gives us some idea now of what one radian looks like in terms of degrees. In this video, we're simply going to convert between the two. If we want to go from degrees, so degrees to radians, all we have to do at this stage is multiply by pi over 180. If we want to go the other way and we want to go from radians to degrees, so radians to degrees, we're going to now do the opposite. We will multiply by 180 over pi. Some of our exact values that we look at in trig are found by converting now from degrees to radians and back. So if we, for example, look at 60 degrees, all we would do to find out how many radians this is, is now multiply by pi over 180 degrees. And we can see 60 over 180 is going to give us 1 over 3. So this is pi by 3 radians. So when you're looking at these exact values, these now are how we can convert them from radians degrees uh, to degrees and back and so on and so forth. So for example, if we had pi by 4 radians and we wanted to change this now into degrees, we would multiply it by 180 over pi. 180 over 4 is going to give me 45 and that's 45 degrees. We just get those nice exact values. This is what we call exact, giving us our special angles. So in question number one, we're going to convert now the uh, values that are already in radians into degrees. So all we need to do from radians, so radians to degrees, so radians to degrees, we're going to multiply it now by 180 over pi. So if we look at this, what we're going to have is pi by 3 on the first one multiplied by 180 over pi. The pi's cancel off, which gives us 60 degrees. Pi by 4 we've just looked at. Pi by 4 multiplied by 180 over pi. Well, the pi's cancel. 180 over 4 is going to give me 45 degrees. If we do 3 pi by 5, this again is an exact value, and multiply it by 180 over pi. This is going to now give me on here, that should give me a total of 100, what are we going to have? 108 degrees. So uh, 108 degrees, so 108 degrees. Then 7 pi by 12 we're going to multiply that by 180 over pi. The pi's are going to cancel. And if we want to, all we need to do in here, let's go ahead and put that on. So 7 over 12, let's put 7 over 12 in, times by 180. That's going to give us now 105 degrees. So we're simply converting 2 degrees from radians. We're asked to convert the following into degrees, giving our answer to one decimal place. So we're going now from, again, radians to degrees. So we will have now 2.13 times by 180 over pi. So in a calculator, so we got now uh, the 2, so 2.13, and we're going to multiply this now by 180 over pi. So 180 over, let's put that in, 180 over pi, and that's going to give me 122.0, so 122.0 degrees. Just consider pi is about 3.14, so we can see this is about two-thirds of that distance. 
Next one, 4.65 multiplied by 180 over pi. We can work what, out what this is from radians. We see the little C here. So all I'm going to do now is just simply cancel that off and put, uh, let's get the delete one, 4.65, 4.65. We'll multiply that. That's going to give me 266.4. So 266.4 degrees. Again, there's about 6.3 um, radians in a complete revolution. So that looks pretty good. On the next one, we got 5.1. So let's just change this over. Let's just put in here. So 5.1 multiplied now by that gives us 292.2. So 292.2 degrees. Nice and straightforward. Okay, we're asked to convert the following into radians, giving our answer in exact form. So if we want to go now from degrees, so degrees to radians, we're going to now multiply this by pi over 180. So we've got 180 times by pi over 180, and this is going to give us pi radians. 135 times by pi over 180 well that's going to give me now on here that's going to be three quarters so three pi by four 135 over 80 45 goes into both so we can uh, go ahead and simplify that 270 multiplied by pi over 180 well 90 goes into both of these so that's going to be three pi by two Next one, 60 multiplied by pi over 180. 60 into 180 goes three times. So this is pi by three. And we read it like so. If you wanted to draw um, a circle, let's go ahead and put this on and look at the corresponding radians and degrees. We will start now at this point right here. And let's put this on. This is going to be zero degrees and zero radians. This is going to be 90 degrees or pi by 2 radians. This is going to be 180 degrees or pi radians. This is 270 degrees or 3 pi by 2 radians. This is going to be 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. So that's one complete revolution. Just here we've got 45 or pi by 4. We've got this point just here. This is going to be now 135 degrees, or we could say 3 pi by 4. We've got this point down here, which is going to be 225 degrees, or we could say 5 pi by 4. We've got this one just here, which is going to be 350 degrees, or we could say now that this is going to be 7 pi by 4. We could look at lots in between here. We could look at this point right here, which is going to be 60 degrees, which is pi by 3. We could have 30 degrees, which is pi by 6, and so on and so forth. And right the way round. These are our special angles, and we consider these in a different unit. But just to give you some idea, if you've met the unit circle before, here are some of the corresponding values. Okay, in question four, we need to convert the following into radians, giving our answers to three significant figures. So 134, we're going to multiply this by pi over 180. So we're going here now into radians. So if we do that, what we've got, let's do 134 multiplied now by, and then we'll have pi. So pi divided by 180. And this is going to give me now, let's hit that one. There we go. That's going to give me 2.34. So that's going to be 2.34 radians. Now, if we think pi is approximately equal to 3.14, we can see that if I drew this as an angle, pi is going to be just here. That's going to be now pi by 2 or 90. So that's 90. That's going to be 180. This angle is somewhere, give or take, around this point right here. So let's put that somewhere around here. So we can see that that is approximately 2.34 radians or 134 degrees. 
Okay, let's quickly do the next one. So we got 97, 97. If you're doing lots of these, perhaps put the pi over 180 first, save you uh, the hassle. That one is going to be 1.69, so 1.69, so 1.69 radians. And then finally, 12 degrees, let's put that one in. So let's go ahead and do that. This should give us now uh, a value of fi uh, pi by 15. That's exact. That's what we call exact. And then to three significant figures, 0 0.209. So 0 0.209 radians. So there we go. Brief introduction to radians. In later videos, we will look at arc lengths and areas. But hopefully that's given you some idea. So let's just go back and look at what we learnt. The angle when measured in radians is simply now the arc length divided by the radius. If we have a radius of r and an arc length of r, that gives us one radian. 2 pi radians is a complete revolution, which gives us 2 pi is 360, pi is 180. One radian is 180 divided by pi, which is about 57.3. We can convert degrees to radians by multiplying by pi of 180 radians to degrees by multiplying by 180 over pi and we have some understanding of the approximate size of a radian.